I now look to Professor Arthur Mutambara to continue the case for the opposition. Mr. President, sir, here we go again. <laughs> it's good to be back in Oxford. 28 years after I entered this institution as a graduate student. When I was approached to speak on this subject in opposition to the motion, I was heavily conflicted. I was worried. But the more I thought about the issues involved, the more I reflected on the matters engaged, I became very clear. The ambivalence disappeared. And I'm here standing in opposition to this motion. We must not embrace an ever closer African Union. And I'm saying that as a Pan-Africanist. Mr. President, sir, the debate here, this disagreement here, is not on the what, it's on the how. The what is shared. We want a united Africa operating with 1.2 billion Africans working together. Collective GDP, $2.3 trillion. All our diamonds, our platinum, our gold under one command. That's what we want as Africans. But I'm here, Mr. President, say, to say An ever closer African Union is the wrong vehicle. It won't deliver what we want. What we want, Mr. President, sir, is the United States of Africa, one country, one entity, either a federation under one strong government, either a unitary state like China or India. One entity. We want to abolish national sovereignty, not decolonize it, abolish it, so that we have continental sovereignty. Only one sovereignty, African sovereignty, not Malawi sovereignty, Zimbabwe sovereignty. No, just one continental sovereignty. The disagreement, Mr. President, sir, is on the how. And I'll show you without equivocation nor ambiguity. Why an ever closer African Union won't deliver what my brother from the States wants? It won't deliver that. You want to know why? Look at the Constitutive Act of the African Union. Look at Article 3B. What does it say? It says we must protect the national sovereignty we must protect the national territorial integrity. We must protect the independence of member states. So which means, as currently defined, the AU will not be able to unite Africans into one colossus, one entity. Why? Because primarily it is founded on the supremacy of national sovereignty. Malawi is sovereign. Swaziland is sovereign. Botswana is sovereign. We don't want that. We want continental sovereignty and link up with the African diaspora. Reason number two why it won't work? There are 55 presidents in Africa. 55, not 54, 55. Now, each one of them wants to be a president, a prime minister even if it means presiding over starving people, even if it means presiding over disempowered people. We cannot expect African leaders, these 55 men, to commit political suicide and legislate themselves out of existence. Therefore, the African leaders, the 55 men, will not allow a change in that constitution to create what you and I want. Why? President Ramaphosa wants to be a president, not a governor, not a minister of transports, 
Yoweri Museveni wants to be a president, not a governor or a minister of agriculture. Emerson Munangagwa wants to be a president and not a minister of local government or the youth. America has 325 million people, GDP $19 trillion. They have one president, a crazy one for now. <laughs> but they have won. China has 1.4 billion Chinese, GDP $11 trillion, one leader. India, 1.2 billion Indians, GDP $2.5 trillion, one leader. Why can't we have one president in this African continent? Why 55? And I am arguing an ever closer African Union will not deliver the United States of Africa. Kuruma, Kwame Krumah's dream. Krumah, there was a big debate, by the way, for those who don't know, in 63, between Krumah on one end and Nyerere. Nyerere was saying, you know, let's go brick by brick, build our nations, build our regional blocks, and then go and build an African unified framework. Krumah was, no, 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 that's dangerous. Let us move very quickly and create one government, one foreign policy, one army, a common currency, and create the United States of Africa right now in the 60s. And of course, Krumah lost, Nyerere won. And guess what? 56 years later, we're still moving closer and closer. We'll never get there. We'll never get there because of the nature of the African Union. Now, here is the other thing. What I'm saying to you has a history, has a precedent. The United States of America, the greatest war the Americans fought was to keep America together, the Civil War. More Americans died in the Civil War than in the First World War and Second World War put together. They bled to create America. America is a federation with one sovereignty, American sovereignty. Guess what? California would have wanted to have a president and have a seat in the UN and be a country and be maybe number four economy in the world. Georgia could do it. But guess what? Iowa, North Carolina, and others who collapse. So they fought, they bled over there to create the United States of America. 325 billion people and $19 trillion GDP. So what we're saying is, there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you want the United States of Africa, you can't have your cake and eat it. You've got to give up on national sovereignty. You've got to give up on your little president in Zimbabwe, little president in Malawi, and gather and pull your sovereignty together. The Chinese fought to create China. They're still fighting to get Taiwan in. They got Hong Kong. The Indians, the same. So there's a history of creating this federation or unitary state. What are the benefits? Can you imagine if we were to work together, our diamonds and gold and platinum under one command? And guess what? You see, the ever closer African Union allows fragmented states, allows non-viable states, and allows the Chinese, the Indians, and the Americans to come and negotiate with Botswana, negotiate with Nigeria, negotiate with Zimbabwe. We get shortchanged as Africans. Can you imagine if I was to walk up and say, here I come, I'm the African. I speak on behalf of 1.2 million people, I, billion people. I speak with a GDP of $2.3 trillion behind me. If I did that, I'll be able to get better deals than we get currently under this arrangement. An over-closed African Union will not deliver what we want. We want the United States of Africa. Yes, there are problems, four time zones, languages, and so on. Yes, it is difficult, but let's go to Kennedy and Mandela. Kennedy says, because it's difficult, we must do it. Not because it is easy, but because it's difficult. Mandela says, it always looks impossible unless, until it is done. 
Yes, the United States of Africa is a difficult proposition, but it won't be delivered by the, by the African Union. But remember, once upon a time, slavery was impossible, insurmountable. Once upon a time, colonialism was impossible. Once upon a time, apartheid could not be resolved. But we are saying now, if we work together as Africans and abandon the project of the Af ever close African Union and embrace the United States of Africa, Mad Mr. President say, what you are giving us here is a dummy. It's half a loaf. We must reject half a loaf of an ever close African Union and say, we don't want that. We want the United States of Africa, which cannot be delivered by the African Union if it gets closer and closer. For these reasons, I am saying we must not embrace an ever closer African Union because sometimes the enemy of the best is the good. Sometimes the enemy of the great is the good. It's a good idea, but not good enough. We must reject it.